We look at the conditions of some local bridges and roads. Plus, it's National Foster Care Month. We're going to hear from a Joplin organization making the system easier on kids. And Secretary of State Blinken wraps up a trip to Israel calling for a ceasefire and a hostage release deal. The four states most watched news starts now. The Southeast Kansas County with the highest number of county maintained roadway miles is also operating on one of the smallest budgets. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Dow Quick. Cherokee County's road and bridge budget for 2024 is $3.6 million. Those are funds set aside to maintain 1,300 miles of road and 234 bridges. Ever wonder why some roads are labeled as county roads, others as state highways? Well, it has mostly to do with who pays to maintain them. 301 of Cherokee County's 1,300 miles are currently paved. The busiest county road is Old 96. Recent bridge inspection reports show more than 2,500 vehicles travel the Kansas portion every day. But you notice when you cross into Missouri, it's no longer a county road. It was one given to us by KDOT but before me. Uh, we're getting ready to get Old 166 you know, where they're doing the new one uh, east of Baxter. So the old part of that, I can't remember how many miles are in it, four or five miles, are going to be county maintained after, after they pull out of there. According to the National Bridge Inventory, Kansas has more than 4,900 bridges in need of repair. Missouri has identified needed repairs on just over 4,500 bridges. Tonight at 6, KOAM's Tanya Box sits down with county officials in both states to see where they stand. May is National Foster Care Month. In Joplin, Foster Adopt Connect aims at keeping kids out of foster care and supporting foster families. Over the last two years, the nonprofit has assisted more than 700 families in nine counties with clothing, food, and other programs. Fostering after our first daughter was born, and so really uh, we had the conversation about how do we parent, how do we raise this child to be giving and loving and kind and generous and all of the things that you want your children to be, and we decided that we would open our home. We come to work, but a lot of what we do doesn't really feel like work because we're coming in alongside families in challenging times, and we get to help them along the way and see them on the other side a lot of times you know, in a whole different light, and it's a really cool thing. According to the organization, Jasper County has almost 400 kids in foster care. Foster Adopt Connect supports not only foster families, but also other members of the community. For more information on how to help and their upcoming events, go to their website. Find a link at koamnewsnow.com. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for a first look at the weather. Well, of course, after more thunderstorms last night into the early morning hours, some severe once again. Today's turned out to be a pretty nice day. We're sitting mainly into the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. We have partly sunny skies across the region, so it looks pretty good for the evening hours. A little breezy. We got those southerly winds kicking in 10 to about 15 miles per hour, but today the severe threat is mainly to our west, so I-35, Wichita, Oklahoma City, and then once you get into the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. Not a whole bunch going on for us. We've had a few isolated little guys kind of skirting through. Over the past couple hours, these are pretty much falling apart, so I do expect it to be fairly quiet through the evening hours as we slide back through the 70s into the mid-60s. Thunderstorms return tomorrow. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. See you soon. Two Ottawa County, Oklahoma jail inmates are sentenced for setting a fire inside the jail. Court documents say it happened on December 23rd. Authorities say 30-year-old Justin Gehring and 23-year-old Tyler Tavis set fire in the jail. Both pleaded guilty to damage by fire of property owned by an institution receiving federal funding. Both are sentenced to five years in prison, one year of supervised release. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is wrapping up his seventh visit to Israel since Hamas attacked that country. He's meeting with his leaders to push for a ceasefire and hostage release deal. Hamas leaders are said to be reviewing a draft proposal and could respond as soon as today. Natalie Brand has the latest details of the trip. Thank you, Thank you, Blinken. 
Secretary of State Antony Blinken tried to comfort demonstrators outside of his hotel in Tel Aviv Wednesday morning as they pleaded for the release of the remaining 133 hostages believed to be held in Gaza. Bringing your loved ones home is at the heart of everything we're trying to do. Secretary Blinken traveled to the region for high-stakes negotiations as the U.S. tries to help broker a deal for a ceasefire that will also bring hostages home. Hamas has to decide uh, whether it will take this deal. There is no time for delay. Uh, there's no time for uh, further uh, haggling. Blinken met with some of the hostages' family members on Wednesday, including Aviva Siegel. I feel like I'm broken up into pieces. She told CBS News it's a painful wait. Siegel was a hostage herself, released in late November, but Hamas has held her American husband, Keith, for more than 200 days. And I know that Keith has had enough. My family's had enough. My country's had enough. Secretary Blinken also met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for more than two hours as the White House urges Israel to limit the scale of its military operation in Rafah, where more than half of Gaza's 2.3 million residents are sheltering. We cannot, will not support a major military operation in Rafah absent uh, an effective uh, plan to make sure that civilians are not harmed. As the U.S. pushes for more humanitarian aid for Palestinians, Secretary Blinken made a stop at a key crossing in Israel and stressed the importance of accelerating the effort. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Despite the international pressure, Prime Minister Netanyahu said this week the Rafah operation would move forward soon and civilians would be evacuated. He did not say when the operation would begin. Campus protests against the war in Gaza escalated overnight on both coasts. At UCLA, chaos erupted with counter-protesters attacking a pro-Palestinian encampment. Some launched what appeared to be fireworks into the tents. And in New York City, police cleared out protesters who had taken over a building at Columbia University. Still ahead, addressing mental health conditions before and after pregnancy. A new study finds diagnoses of postpartum mental health conditions have doubled in a decade. I'm Bradley Blackburn with One New Mom's Story and why doctors say many cases still go untreated. And later, the Federal Reserve wraps up its two-day meeting with a decision on interest rates. Topping today's Health Watch, May 1st is Maternal Mental Health Day raising awareness about an issue that affects more than a quarter of women during and after pregnancy. But there are signs more women are getting the diagnosis and the treatment they need. Bradley Blackburn explains. Uh, she weighed three pounds, 12 ounces when she was born. She was tiny, tiny. When Madison Ellis's daughter Sutton was born premature last year, her baby's health was at risk and Ellis found she was struggling too. The anxiety and depression was something I've never felt before. Um, I mean, I just cried and cried and cried. The former preschool teacher says the stress kept her from bonding in those early days. I didn't want to be near her. I didn't want really anything to do with her. I almost checked myself into the hospital because I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't I couldn't handle it. A new study shows diagnoses of postpartum mood and anxiety disorders have nearly doubled in the last decade, and use of psychotherapy has increased 150 so percent. Dr. Kara Ziven with the University of Michigan is an author. It's a mixed message from this research. On one hand, one could look at it and say, wow, people are getting sicker. There's so many more people with these disorders than there used to be. But on another way, we could say, hey, people are actually getting recognized and they're getting treatment. She says still many cases go untreated, especially among minority groups. Sometimes there can be disparities in both screening and diagnosis and treatment. It's definitely something that should be talked about. Ellis talked to her doctor who recommended a program through the University of Michigan called MC3 with an online support group and regular check-ins. Today, mother and baby are doing well. It has truly been a godsend for me. And she wants other new moms to know how important it is to ask for help. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Ellis also says medication and therapy have helped with her anxiety and depression. Three in four Americans believe treatment of mental health takes a back seat to physical health in the U.S. 
A survey by Gallup and the West Health Institute found while most Americans perceive a dramatic rise in mental health issues over the past five years, they think treatment for those is worse than for physical ailments. And that is a look at today's health news. A little later, our pet vet on call. Hi, I'm Dr. Eva Dudek from Parsons Pet Hospital. Coming up, we're going to talk about storm phobia. Well, we do have more storms than the forecast. We're going to look at that coming up. Well, a little bit of a break in the showers and thunderstorms for us today, even though we had another round, some severe last night into the morning hours. So if we look at our rain stats, uh, this is out of Joplin. Of course, some areas have had a lot less, other areas a lot more, but a uh, quarter of an inch since midnight today. Um, and this puts us for the year right at about 11 and a half inches. We still actually have a deficit, which is kind of crazy with all the rain that we picked up over the past week or so. It looks pretty good. Here's a nice shot. Indigo Sky Casino and Resort, of course, Indigo, is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. Temperature is great. Upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Looks good. Seventh and range line currently outside, setting at 79. South winds at about 10 to 15. Gusts over 20. So it's been a little bit on the breezy side. Through the evening hours, we slide back through the lower 80s, 70s, into the mid 60s a little bit later on tonight. We have had a few isolated thunderstorms the past couple of hours, kind of shooting across southeastern Kansas, but now falling apart. So really, it's just down to a few little sprinkles right across uh, parts of northern Labette into Neosho County. Most of us are going to stay dry tonight. May get an isolated storm in here by morning, but all the big time severe weather, western Kansas, down through the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, and then stretching back into West Texas. Some of these storms will try to get in by morning, but they're really going to fall apart. But we'll see the moisture kind of picking up again tomorrow. You can see this little curl here in the upper level winds. That's our next upper level wave, which is going to head toward us as we go into Thursday. So rain chances low tonight start to creep up through the morning hours into the afternoon, then we'll slowly taper off by the time we get into Friday. So let's take a look at it again this evening. Pretty good. So we're going to stop at 5 a.m. in the morning. Temps sitting into the upper 60s. Storms out to our west. As we go through the morning hours, some showers, a few thunderstorms will pop up. So you can see these guys from Fort Scott, Parsons, Chanute, Coffeyville, non-severe storms, but thunderstorms. Thunderstorms increase, especially along the north of I-44 by the noon hour. And then once we get into the afternoon, we'll see some stronger storms picking up southeastern Kansas. Some of these could be strong to low grade severe. Periods of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. Then after midnight, we'll start to taper off. And then Friday overall looks pretty good, uh, kind of breezy temperatures into the upper 70s. So severe threat tomorrow, it's a level one out of five, so it's a lower threat, but still, obviously we want to keep our eyes on it. Plus additional rainfall, uh, especially along the north of I-44, a lot of areas that picked up very heavy rain on Saturday could pick up a half an inch to an inch of rain across the region. All right, so thunderstorms increase tomorrow. Friday looks good. Showers and thunderstorms back in Saturday morning should be non severe. And then again, Sunday afternoon, some of those could be a little bit stronger, but I really don't see besides tomorrow being a low severe threat. I don't see a big severe threat until next Monday and Tuesday. Wow. May is starting out the way April ended. And that's I know. The chances of storms like kind of crazy. Thanks, Doug. Interest rates are sitting at a 23-year high. Coming up, we're going to learn what the Federal Reserve plans to do going forward. Topping today's Consumer Watch, the Federal Reserve wrapped up its two-day meeting on interest rates and decided to leave a key benchmark rate at a 23-year high. Fed's move is designed to bring inflation down, but the strategy is also having a major impact on the housing market. Christine Lazar explains. Joanne Dinu is currently a renter and wants to become a homeowner in Southern California. But during her three-month search for a new house, she's only found frustration. 
there's not much out there. There's very low inventory on the house, houses that we're looking at. Existing home sales are down largely because of mortgage rates, which are now over 7%, double from two years ago. And would-be sellers aren't willing to part with their current low rate. Why sell and pay higher interest on a new home? So people are sitting in their homes. The Federal Housing Finance Agency calls it the lock-in effect and calculates it led to a 57% drop in sales late last year. The lack of supply is leading to higher prices in many areas. So this is a two-bedroom, two-bathroom townhome, multi-level, with a loft and sold for just under 500,000. What was it listed for? 450. So you had multiple we offers. We had multiple offers. And Realtor Marianne Bean says many people are buying homes now with the hopes of refinancing later. I think overall buyers and sellers are just tired of waiting. They're tired of waiting for the most opportune moment to do a transaction. Just a regular little neighborhood. But mortgage lender Jody Canfield says it's not clear when rates will come down. So it's important buyers are realistic. It may not be your dream home, but let's get into the house that makes sense for your monthly budget. I don't know when the right time is to buy anymore. Dinu plans to be patient, but wants to buy before August. That's when the rent on her current place goes up $300 a month. Christine Lazar, CBS News, Los Angeles. Job openings have fallen to the lowest level in three years. Data released from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows U.S. employers had about 8.5 million available jobs in March. That's fewer than economists expected. Our pet vet on call next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, beating the high cost of summer camps. Then on KOAM News at 6, why the Joplin School Board opposes a state bill aimed at increasing teacher pay, among other things. Plus, we're going to hear from a Jasper County official about where they stand on bridge and road conditions. And we have several local athletes signing to the collegiate level today. We're going to see who's going where. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOAM News at 6. We've had a couple of rounds of severe weather already in the past week with more storms on the way. It's important to look after our pets. Today's question for our pet vet on call is, why is my dog so afraid of thunder? How can I help him? There is a plethora of reasons why somebody would be afraid of storms. But the good things to do for, for that um, is to have a safe room in your house, someplace where there's no windows, where they can't see the lightning or, see, or hear the thunder. Sometimes it, uh, it's good to give them treats in there, play a little music. Uh, you might need a sedative from your veterinarian because this phobia can be so, so severe that they can actually hurt themselves. So if your dog or cat, usually it's a dog, not so much cat, is afraid, get your veterinarian on board to help you out. We invite questions from anyone. If you have a question, you just send it to PetVet at KOIMTV.com. Dr. Eva Dudek from the Parsons Pet Hospital answers a different question or brings us a fun fact every Wednesday right here on KOAM News at 5. You can also find answers to previous questions on our website. All right, let's check out our picks of the litter for the week. From the Joplin Humane Society, we have Rue, a one to two year old female hound mix. And from the Southeast Kansas Humane Society, we have Rilo. The shelter says he's a two-year-old pit bull terrier who loves cuddles and hugs. If you're looking for a pet, why not at least check out your local Humane Society? That would certainly be your first stop as you look for a pet, and there's a good chance it'll be your last stop because they have a lot of great pets available. Uh, yeah. Storm chances again ahead. Yeah, pretty quiet tonight, which is great news. But showers and thunderstorms picking up again uh, mid to late morning tomorrow. Uh, could have some strong, maybe low grade severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Friday looks good on and off non severe storms Saturday and Sunday and then severe threat back in again Monday and Tuesday. It is May 1st and of course May is our peak month for severe weather. It's certainly starting out that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next. And of course, we're going to be right back here for KOAM News at 6. See you then. Let's make it a great evening.